Hello, this is Hawk Devine, and today we are going to r slash rules horror. Where the stories are both scary and based on rules. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to your channel. I have no idea what I was going to say. Let's just get right into this. With our first story being... Drum roll, please. No, there isn't. What had I done? Was this supposed to be a sweet 16? I never meant for this to happen. Really. They're all dead and it's my fault. How am I supposed to live with this? I couldn't take it. Not like that. They don't. They didn't deserve all this because of my stupidity. I came out and killed them. Almost all of them. So why am I alive? Is it so meant for me to stand alone or remain of my town? I only broke two rules though. A really simple one even. I never thought this would be the outcome. It was supposed to be the... Be a myth. I hadn't broken rule one. The one that said I wasn't allowed out of town. I'd broken rule two. I talked in present sense. It was really easy to slip up. So I figured that some unhad by now. I guessed wrong. Re all three was broken. No one had entered the spider house. The kid it's would chicken out beforehand. The warnings and rules only adding to that fear. I had obeyed rule four as well. They hadn't started fire between midnight and six AM. Rule five stayed unbroken as well. Cause we'd never been outside during one of the common blood moons. Yet the pushing point of this all to all of this was breaking rule six. I'd even sound like a big rule to have broken. No one would expect no one expects a judge as uh, allowed uh, to hold the gavel. The judge was already a strange job. The process for hiring went as follows. People were sent to the forest and the one who returned became the judge. It usually ended with all of them dead, but if one of them came back alive with a judge already chosen, the two had to try had to kill each other. The one who lived got the job, which paid quite well. But now they're all dead. Sheriff McMiller, Judge Joel, even our local pizza maker Myers didn't survive. So why did I? That scream after I picked up the gavel was horrid. I had passed out from shock. I would say maybe it didn't kill me because I had been asleep. Well, my mom was asleep and she's dead. Why was I still here? What sort of torment is that? Why is that what I had woken to? I'm sorry, Mom and Dad. I'm sorry to everyone who lived in that broken town. I'd gone away from the fires and I'm safer now. I would have loved to see you again. A good advice. I've gone my way. I've gone my own way. Hopefully a safer one. I'd never forget you. On to the second story. Rules for this town. I notice you're new in town. Thought I'd tell you the rules. 1. Go to church every Sunday. It does not matter if you believe or not, you must go. If you fail to go, refer to rule 10. 2. Make sure to take care of others before yourself. If you have a drink of someone else's support, give it to them. This ensures that they do not find you. If they do, refer to rule 8. If someone tries speaking to you in some strange language, call the police. They will be dealt with according to rule 10. 4. You get 30 minutes a week of social media. They track it via your internet service provider. VPNs are outlawed, so don't try that. If you break this, refer to rule 10. You must accept any gifts a stranger gives to you. It matters not if it ranges from a dead animal to a diamond ring. They will know if you don't. If you ignore this, refer to rule 8. 6. This is a car-free community. Try riding a bicycle, taking a walk, or skateboarding around. If they find out you own a car, refer to Rule 8. 7. The car dealership will try and get you to buy their special car via ads in the mail. Do not open anything from car dealership. They're in red envelopes. 8. There's a secret society that hides in the shadows. 
If you break into the social norms of the town, they will find you. They have a three strike system. Every time you break the like a rule, they will give you a strike. If you get three, refer to rule ten. Nine. There's only one restaurant in town. It's owned by an elderly couple, and they love whenever people come by and eat. Try it every once in a while. But if you do, do not, under any circumstances, order their fajitas. 10. If you need to refer to this rule, it's too late for you. In the sewers of this town rests an ancient demon. It lurks in the darkness, feasting on the flesh of the fallen. If you are thrown into the sewers by anyone, you have five minutes until it finds you. Your only option is to pray. Pray with all your might that God lets you die quickly. Eleven. There are stories of people who have escaped the demon rule ten. Do not believe them. They are liars. Don't listen to them. Ignore any rumors and tell the police if you hear stories of this. The stories are just that. Stories. Interesting. Now we're on to the third story. What I got at my delivery job. Good luck on your first shift. Rules for the e road. Under no circumstances as you go off to the route shown on the GPS. Are you to go off the route shown on the GPS, irrespective of how long it is. Follow it as if your life depends on it. Because it does. Hmm. <sighs> On a two, on a, on a related note, if your GPS reroutes at any point after you begin a delivery, do not follow it. Press the phone icon on your steering wheel and dis and follow the dispatcher's instructions. Three, do not stop on a motorway or on the hard shoulder. The former makes you sing "Duck for the Creatures" and the latter breaks rule number one. Four. When going on any unpaved road, turn off your beams and press the second button on your left column. It'll guide you through the darkness while keeping you hidden. 5. If at any point your radio turns on and you only hear static, turn off the engine, lie flat on a bench, and close your eyes. Count to 100 in your head. If you hear any tapping on your cabin, count again from 0 as soon as it stops. Rinse and repeat until nothing can be heard. After you are done, slowly sit back up and continue driving. Six, if the previous occurs while you are on the motorway, press the button marked EMP on your wheel and floor it. And I do mean floor it. Drive as fast as you possibly can without losing control of the van, and when the stack goes away, begin to count 10 seconds in your head. Only then begin to slow, back, slow down back to the speed limit. Do not worry, you will not be docked. Seven, turn off your beams whenever there's another vehicle coming towards you. It might be late motorists. It might be someone or something else. You do not want to find out. Rules for delivering. Leave your phone in the cabin whenever making a delivery. Some of the entities can sense electromagnetic signals and you do not want them knowing to look for you. Depending on the color of the shipping label, do the following. 1. Yellow. Drop it wherever you can without losing sight of your way back. Be careful. 2. Red. Grab one of the capsules and move slowly and carefully. If you begin to hear growling, in footsteps, scraping, or anything similar, track it and throw it as far away from you and the van as possible. Run back to the van as soon as you hear them getting away from you. Forget about the package. Your life is infinitely more important. Silver. Do not let any light shine on you. It means the creature is a deaf, but can see you if you come out of the dark. Green. Knock on the front door. If you get a response, follow the instructions. Otherwise, leave it there and continue. Five. Black. Call dispatch. 
They will let you know exactly what to do step by step. Do not open the door before calling them. You will never be found again. If you hear a female voice calling from the distance, go back to the van without running. If it's a male voice, ignore it and continue and keep going. If either voice comes closer to you, freeze in place and close your eyes. Hold your breath if you can and keep hearing footsteps around you. Do not open your eyes or make a single sound, no matter how hard the temptation. No matter what you feel or hear around you, only do it after you hear them leaving and the noise cease. If at any point you hear any animals ill sounds approaching you, slowly head back to the van and drive away as fast as you can. You do not want to risk it being a regular animal or an unspeakable abomination. There is no way to tell in the dark, and we don't want to tell by how I will find you in the morning. Rules for debrief. 1. When returning to the warehouse, make sure you call back dispatch and tell the SBA time window and the code generated on your screen. You will not be lighted otherwise. 2. Do not be layered in two minutes of what the GPS says. It's the middle of the night, so you will not have any problem of surviving. Traffic will not stop you. 3. You can spend the night in quarters if you have no way of returning home by yourself. You'll be paid bi-weekly. Our client fees vary greatly, wildly, so it'll be anywhere between 300 to 5,000 pounds. But we trust you'll be satisfied. Follow the rules. Don't let us lose you. And I think we're on the fourth story. Find yourself in the abyss. Follow these simple rules and tricks to escape with your soul. Important. Hi reader, if you are reading this note, you may want to read quickly. You are not oh, where you think you are. You are in the abyss, otherwise uh, as known as the void. Do this to the letter or your soul may not be left intact. The abyss is a space where everything and that you have ever broken lies. Like everything. Yes, even bones. Not that you... Now you know this, we can begin. Precautions. Approximately an hour and 25 minutes after you receive this note, everything around you should crumble into blackness. If it doesn't, then... I'm sorry. Soon after, you will start feeling intense bouts of guilt. This will occur soon after objects start to materialize. Unless you don't remember breaking something subconscious, you will feel an intense urge to fix the object. Don't give in to this. Unless you would like to morph into one of the objects yourself, of course. If you see white shadows in the corner... It's crossed out, but it says, Freedom, he hasn't seen one in a long, long time. But actually, run! Run as fast as you can! If you don't, he will. And then we have a whole bunch of emotes. We've got down, flag, cross, death, thumbs down, pointing left, a single wire droplet, thumbs up, what looks like a, a little explosion, stop hand, okay hand, two or peace hand, okay hand, sad face, pointing left again, Snowflake pointing down, stop, death pointing up, water droplet, snowflake, flag, I think that's a star of David, flag, cross, pointing right, flag, another explosion, pointing left, cross, pointing left, explosion. Okay. <sighs> Anyway, let's get back into the actual thing. Rules! V.2. Ooh. After an hour in the real world has passed, you will see two doors have constantly switching colors. Check below! The red, green, and blue door are makes you have to relive all the worst moments in your life until you can come to peace with them. All of them! The purple, white, and yellow door will open to a room. The white entity is here. Run! This is the only rule that, supersede, that supersedes precautions. He will ask you questions. And you have to answer er, honestly. If you lie, he will know. And your best bet is precautions. Once you pass as one of these, you will have to do the other. If you went through the right door first, 
redacted. Questions will be more personal and more about revealing secrets. If you just affirm the report, you will live all of your life until you come to peace with every bad thing that you know of. After completing your second trial, you will see a black doorway. Walk through it at, to be sent home. Tell everyone that you are okay and dismiss the event. Wait, I need to go fix my chair. Interesting. <sighs> oh, this got personal. Okay. If you're seeing this post, please continue reading. Hello, whoever you are behind the screen. If you're reading this post, you are in a grave amount of danger, and seeing this is a sign that you have been cursed. If you want to survive, then continue along. You are completely entitled to think this is fiction, but it's not. Under any circumstances, please do not exit from this page, or intentionally or not, break a rule. The lunar one can sense when this occurs. And, oh dear, I believe they walked into uh, uh, the electric fence. There is no escaping your... If you did anything first, recite the following exactly three times. Apollius, Dexterius, the Dexterius, oh my god, S. Vaven, your neck. Next. To save you from the fading rule one, I'll give you the correct pronunciation of the phrase. Oh. Apollius, Dexterius, oh my god, at head. Ex Bavin, your neck. It means in your, your language, please allow me to eat this meal in this forsaken world. And I praise him for his greatness. If you are curious, if you fail to follow this rule, this refer to rule one. Rule three. If you are in a car at the time of reading, refer to the situation slash rules below to see what to do. Hey, you are alone. So you are alone in your car. This means that you will not have to worry about it with the imposters, for now anyway. Do not look up and continue reading. If you look up, this is the last time I'm going to say this. Rule 1. Continue driving and don't worry about gas. If you, it won't run out. If it does, then you are very lucky. And it, then you have it great. You escaped before undescribable. B. You are riding with only one person. So you are riding with one person. So if they are in the passenger seat, then check, then immediately check behind you. If the passenger is smiling, this only happens if you are truly unlikely. Otherwise, refer to the sub rules of this rule. B2. Their face is neutral. If their face is neutral, then you'll be inspired by the one we refer to as the lunar. Never go on a ride again, or you will see this post at some point. At this time, I mean, he won't be so nice. B3. They are frowning. In this case, grab the gun in your glove compartment and shoot them, then crash the car. It will be fatal, but this is a dream, and if you don't do this, or at least the latter part, skip to step 6. If you fail at the farmer, not even God can save you. C. You are writing with... More than one person. For a chance of survival, go to step six. Otherwise, rule four: they are real. Maybe go outside and draw flowers while you can. And while you're at it, go talk to redacted. Rule five. 
They are fake and don't go outside, as they will know if you see any flowers. Nor does it go to rule 6. Do not be loud or pray to God. He will not help you. Yet. Rule 6. If you are redirected here, then you screwed up royally. Your only hope is to pray to God if you have proven brave enough, you will be transferred back to your realm. Otherwise, well, yeah. Rule 7. If at any time the power flickers, that's just us friendly telling you to come out because we found you. Rule 8. If the power completely goes out for any reason, hide. You have two minutes to do so before the imposters will start looking for you. They will look in the closets under the bed first. And they never check twice. If they find you, sorry. But well, again, you know. If at any time a rule seems well off, then they do the opposite of that rule. I write the us. Oh, so sadly, seven is true. Wait, is that flickering? <sighs> and here we have an address note. I'll be here. If you're here, then you finish this. This is my first story, so, constru so constructive criticism would be highly appreciated. For those with anxiety, take a chill pill. It's just a story. Or is it? Nice try, author. I didn't know it's just a story. I'm hoping my audience also knows it's just a story. Rules for the rain. Hello, if you're reading this, the rain is here. It's not any normal rain you would see once a week or something, but something much worse. Read the rules and follow them to survive. 1. Don't look to the uh, sky. There is a reason why the rain isn't natural or artificial. 2. Do not let a single water drop up on, on, on to your skin. The water works like an acid poison. 3. Don't let too much water into a room. If there is too much water in a room, lock the door of the room and don't acknowledge anything you hear inside, including the sounds of screams and mirrors breaking. 3a. If you lock the door and see a note leaving the gap at the door, do not read a single word in the note. You will die of suffocation in the, by the end of the day if you do. 4. You usually avoid a room with loud sounds, so make sure to start playing loud sounds on the room you're in. 5. Don't enter too many rooms. You never know if he's going to be inside one of them. 6. If you see an eye peeking through the window, here's what you should do based on the color of it. Dark brown, leave the room and lock the door immediately. Light brown, do the same as you, uh, as what the dark brown rule says, but make sure her to not have eye contact for at least 2 to 1 seconds as you do it. You'll see him once you turn around and he'll do something to you that is on the same level as humane. Blue, Sarah for 10 seconds. It should leave. But if it doesn't, do the same as what the dark brown rule says. Green, close your eyes for 7 seconds to turn around. It should leave. Orange, turn around and leave the room. Make sure not to look back though. Black. Blink six times and it will leave. No pupil eye or dark blue. Do not move. Seriously, do not try to do any movement. The things that will do to you once you move breaks the barriers of what is inhumane. 7. Do not go to the guard of your house. Good luck. Oh, that isn't weirdly ominous. <sighs> there is a man. He is following you. One, clot your skin, bleed from your veins as it flows like a river smoothly down your skin. You love this. You love it so much. You have to love it. 2. You may not run or hide or scream or whimper or cry or call for help. 
He will. No, do not. Three, the food is rotting and the water tastes disgusting. And the sinew smells delightful. Kin is nothing. They mean nothing. Feed on cartilage, bone, flesh, brain, eye, intestine. Four, if you step into the sun, feel your flesh melting, your eyes decay, your teeth rot. Five, the people, sur people surround you. They are there. They are watching. False people see you. Do not interact. Do not speak. Do not make noise. Do not hear. Stop it. Please. Please stop. Punishments. 1. Your dominant hand. 2. Your dominant arm. 3. Your left foot. 4. Your left leg. 5. Your non-dominant hand. 6. Your non-dominant arm. 7. Your right foot. 8. Your right leg. 9. One eye. 10. One ear. Eleven, one eye. Twelve, one ear. Thirteen, your mouth. <sighs> I guess I have to explain this because people can't read in between the lines or in the lines either because apparently nobody can tell what he will know, do not, is saying. If you do any of these things, the man will know. Like, come on, guys. 1. You have to commit acts of self-harm. This is seen in the you have to love it at the end. 2. You are not allowed to ask for help. 3. You cannot eat normal food. You have to eat the flesh of others. You are encouraged to eat your own family. 4. If you step into the sun, you rot and decay. 5. Or just there for the scare, scares. Could be interpreted as one, of, as more of these men or whatever. I made this vow, but when there's a group of people around you, you can't react or speak. And the part about not hearing them is meant as a warning against hearing what they say, else you go mad. Then the punishments are ambiguous. I didn't specify what punishment means. Only that happens in a specific order until there's nothing left. You may believe they disappear or run away in line with the rest of this, or some sort of infection. I don't know. That read more like an author said at the end. <clears throat> anyway, we're on to... Uh, rules for living in a cabin! To whichever unfortunate lad who's reading this, oh, I'm a lass, but go off, I'd first like to start with an apology. You were never supposed to end up here. By the time you're reading this, I'm most likely already dead. And this journal has a list of rules to follow if you want to prolong your survival. If you look around, you should be in a cabin in the woods. And outside should be a snowy, winter -er landscape. If one or both of these are not true, I'm not sure if these rules will provide any help. General rules! Rule 1. Keep warm. This should go without saying, but you uh, uh, want to keep warm. There is a nice cozy fireplace and some blankets, so try to keep the fire running. If you don't know how to get a fire started traditionally, there's a lighter under the bed. Rule 2. Hang on. Something started I wasn't supposed to. Okay. We're back. Rule 2. Don't starve. Should it also go without saying, but don't starve to death. Nothing except some forms of flowers and trees grow here, so you're going to have to live off of hunting. 
If you're a vegan or don't know to hunt, I'm sorry, but you're out of luck. Let's read that card and fell near the lighter. Rule 3. Ignore the crying. Time to time, you might hear crying outside of your cabin while you're out hunting. Don't make any sudden movements or noises. Do not try to investigate the source of the noise. Move the premises as quietly and quickly as you can. Rule 4. Your cabin is your safe house. Nothing is allowed to enter unless you allow it to. So be careful of what you allow into your house. Keeping the door open, even unintentionally, is considered allowing someone to enter your home. Rule 5. Make sure to maintain your cabin. Make sure to fix any holes or leaks in the cabin. If possible, you don't want to be too cold, and if the hole gets big enough, it could be considered an entrance and trigger Rule 4. Rule 6. The toilet is a bucket near the side of the bed. I know, gross. Once you're done with your business, or to dump it far away. Nothing will happen if you don't, but it's gross to dump it near the cabin. Rule 7. Don't trust the other survivors. There are others out there, but the chances of you ever finding someone is low. If they're insistent on getting inside your cabin for any reason at all, ignore them. Don't be a hero. If outside, do not let them follow you home. Kill them if necessary. Uh, oh yes, by the way, I do not condone murder. <laughs> I don't know oh, if that should have been obvious or not. But uh, don't actually kill anyone. These are just fun little fancy rules. Rule 8. Watch out for blizzards. Aside from freezing to death, there is more. There is one more reason to avoid blizzards. They take you into the second layer of this area, and you do not want to be either. There. there are a few ways to predict a snow blizzard. Rule 8a. Snow rates. Snow rates tend to take the form of extremely beautiful women, but can also take the form of a close loved one. They leave people into blizzards, and are often a sign of something more sinister in the vicinity. Do not listen to them and you should be fine. Rule 8b. It never stops snowing. If at any point in it stops snowing, a blizzard will appear within 5 minutes. This will always be the case with the exception of running into a snow... Oh right. They don't want you to know you're walking into a blizzard. Head inside the cabin or any other shelter immediately. Rule 8c. Blizzards are localized. If an area seems to be snowing heavier than an area uh, uh, without the snow of oh, stopping, it means a blizzard is already in progress. Avoid stepping into the blizzard if possible. Rule 9. Don't leave the cabin with this journal. They know how to write. I don't want any of those creatures out there to trick any others into following the rules they've made up. They are allowed into the cabin. So unless you mess up rule four, I have four. Keep the journal inside the cabin. Rule ten: Never end your own life. That's a pretty good rule in general. I understand things happen. It's going to be tough. A dagger isn't for taking your life. It's to protect it. Do anything to prevent your death. Dying will allow them to steal more people. So if you are found, I implore you to fight back with all the power you have in your body. As long as you are alive, you have a chance of making it out of here. That's an interesting one. Now, we are on the final story. It just has to load. <laughs> Final story called 
Mommy makes a mistake. A young child stirs from slumber, startled by a loud bang resonating from the living room. Trembling beneath the safety of their blankets, they dare not venture out. After several minutes of this hiding, a delicate sensation rests up against her legs, starting a mix of curiosity and fear. Gathering their courage, the child peeks out from underneath her blanket. We are met with an unexpected sight. A letter with nervousness pervading their body, they quickly grab it, their heart pounding with terror. In the darkness of the bedroom, the hastily scribbled sentences were difficult to make out, but not impossible. Filled with confusion, the child swiftly reached towards their drawer, receiving a flashlight. They struggled to sound the words on the paper, but they eventually succeeded in reading the following. Hi honey, mommy made a tiny mistake and she's going to be gone for a very long time because of it. There are some mean people inside of our house right now and I need you to do a few favors for mommy to make sure that they, uh, they leave. Luckily, you everything you need should be right inside of your closet. Finish reading this and go inside. Rule 1. Tie your closet door with the clothes in your closet as soon as you get inside. Ignore any banging or scratching coming from outside. The mean people aren't very happy right now. Rule 2. The mean people really don't like the light, so you should uh, so you need to stay inside of your closet until the sun comes up. I know you don't like the closet, but it's really important. Rule 3. Keep the flashlight by your drawer with you at all times. If you see something that looks mean, shine the light on it, at it, and it should go away. Rule 4. Be super quiet. The mean people don't have very good hearing, so as long as you don't make any noise, you won't even need to shine a light. Rule 5. Inside the closet, I left you a big container of salt, a book, and a little necklace that has a big plus sign on it. Just like school. You need to use these things very quickly, okay? Rule 5a. Dump all the salt across the closet door. Make sure that or you are inside first. Try to make sure the salt doesn't have any gaps. This is very important because the mean people might get in if you don't. Rule 5b. Put that little necklace on. The mean people don't like it. They are more likely to leave you alone while it's on. Rule 5c. If you ever see any weird it stars while you're hiding, pick up the book and open it to any page and read the crazy looking words scribbled all over. It'll be fun, like a game. The sights start glowing before you finish reading the words. Unintelligible writing. Just turn around and close your eyes, okay, honey? Honey, you can't let those fucking monsters mean people touch you. Mommy doesn't want to scare you, but the mean people will hurt you very badly if you let them. Oh wow, that was an interesting way to read cross out text. I kind of like that one though. I know that this is scary, honey, but remember that mommy loves you. You are stronger than the mean people, and I know you can do this. When the sun comes up, go call the police just like I taught you. Tell them that mommy left and you don't didn't know what else to do. Don't tell anybody about the mean people. I just try I just want to make our lives better when I summoned them. When I made a deal with those Demons. Bad people. I truly didn't mean for this to happen. I am so sorry. The child was shot. They couldn't fully comprehend the severity of the situation, but they knew that this was wildly out of the ordinary. They began running towards the closet, tears beginning to form at the corner of their eyes. Before they could make it, however, they saw a large, shadowy figure in the corner of their room. They suddenly stopped, and with the desire for comfort overriding any common sense the child might have had, they called out, Mommy? Tomorrow the closet lay undisturbed. The saw never touched, the book lay unopened, the Netflix left strewn on the floor. And the child... Gone. And so ends the final story. What was the story about? I think it was a mother who 
tried to summon unnatural forces to increase her wealth. And doing so might have very well cost her her life. Anyway, if you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be, going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!